Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. Ms. Thompson, you have the honors. Okay. I hope everybody had a great Easter. I know we sure did. Easter is, is definitely the holiday for all of us to really think about who really sacrificed for us so we can have all our freedoms here and eternally. So if um, we just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, this beautiful weather, and just the, the freedoms that you give us. I just pray that we will always keep our eyes focused on you and keep you the main thing and help us to govern and lead as you would have us to do. In your name I pray, amen. amen. We all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me announce, Mr. Turner is going to be president by Zoom, so he will not physically be here. Um, okay, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So move. Mm -hmm. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. By the way, when you're attending by Zoom, you cannot vote. So that's why we did not wait on Mr. Turner. <coughs> Who's coming forward with a proclamation? Stephen Sigmund is here. Our director of the Excellent. Yes, sir. Okay. What does she bring everybody forward? Yeah. Do you want me to read it? Or? Yeah. Okay. You can read the official. Okay. Proclamation for uh, the National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week uh, 2024 is April 14th through the 20th. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require law enforcement, fire, or emergency medical services. Whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of sheriff's deputies, police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. Whereas the safety of our law enforcement, firefighters, and paramedics is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from the citizens who telephone the Alamance County 911 Emergency Communications Center. Whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. And Alamance County telecommunicators are the first point of contact for any emergency for the entire county, including all municipalities within Alamance County. Whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for our sheriff's deputies, police officers, firefighters, and paramedics by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them pertinent information, and ensuring their safety. Whereas public safety telecommunicators of the Alamance County 911 Center have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, the treatment of patients by providing life-saving instructions, not limited to, but including CPR, childbirth, choking, bleeding control, and even mental health crisis. Whereas each telecommunicator has exhibited compassion and understanding and professionalism during the performance of their job in this past year. Therefore, it be 
resolved with the Alamance County Board of Commissioners declares the week of April 14th through the 20th, 2024 to be National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Alamance County in honor of the women, men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our county, citizens, and first responders safe. Thank you. If you will, as long as you can get a picture, I'm going to ask the county commissioners to stand that everyone that's in public safety, law enforcement, and so forth, come forward, please. your plaque up and everyone smile. <laughs> Isn't there a little bit to my left, your right? Uh, so I'm in front of this nice lady's face right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't want to block her. Thank you. Guys and gals, thank you. Yes, indeed. That one will go with you, and this one goes in our record. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good job. Do we not have any public comments? No, sir. That's the shortest and best public comment segment <laughs> we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any comment? All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. I do have one question, though, about the opioid settlement. Yes. I know there was a change. Yes. Uh, is there any way I could talk to someone who's responsible for that? I just wanted to get uh, the why. The clarification of what changed. And it's not important. It's not crazy important. It really isn't. You want to take that? Yeah. I know that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Gary it, was, it was just an error while, while we were cut, the numbers were coming in and okay, we had the old draft of the resolution. Because we, we had mentioned it at the Board of Health meeting, uh, and I just wanted to make sure that we're all good. That's all. Yeah. yeah that's not, all. I don't see anything wrong with it. I just wanted to. Yeah, it was just an error as we were Thank moving you. through the I process. Sort of just thought I'd ask. Thank you. Gonna switch seats on you. And I was going to ask you to come forward, but I think you I, done. Yeah, I thought I'd try this angle this time. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. I am presenting to you the proposed fiscal year 25 through 29 capital improvement plan and the fiscal year 24 25 capital budget. Today we're just introducing this plan to you. It's just a plan. And we, as you recall, have scheduled a special uh, work session to delve a little deeper into these projects. There's a lot to get uh, your brain around in terms of the needs and the funding resources that, uh, funding sources that go with each one. So the theme of this uh, is rebuilding a foundation. So much like what our school system has experienced this year, we are playing catch up on facility maintenance. I don't have any new uh, large projects in here. Most all of our projects next year are either deferred maintenance or upfitting spaces to accommodate existing services and state mandated needs within the justice system. Just as way of reminder, your capital improvement plan is uh, a plan, right? It's a multi-year plan of proposed capital projects that also forecasts future spending needs. On the other hand, we have a capital budget. That is just the upcoming year's costs of the capital improvement plan. So those are the projects and the expenditures that require annually a vote of the county commissioners for approval. So although we have a five-year plan, you're only adopting it one year at a time with your vote. 
I'll also remind you that our capital improvement plan is a comprehensive plan, including all of the county's mm -hmm. capital needs, as well as the court system, the Elements Burlington School System, Elements Community College as well. I'm going to start on this slide with your pie chart. This is just a basic uh, reminder of, of what type of projects you'll find in your capital improvement plan. The projects have to have a minimum cost of $50,000 to be considered. They must have a use, useful, I'm saying useful, but it feels like I'm saying youthful, useful lifespan of 10 years or more. And then they must, the projects must meet one of the definitions that you see on the screen to the, to the left. So they can be for acquisition or construction of a physical facility that would benefit the community. They can be the acquisition or interest in a land uh, purchase that would benefit the community. They can be for the construction or acquisition of public utilities. Then we have ongoing acquisition of assets for major equipment or physical systems. We have major modifications to facilities, which would include additions to existing facilities, anything that would increase the square footage, the useful life, or the value. And then finally, capital maintenance or replacement projects on existing facilities, which is the bulk of the projects that you have upcoming next year. I'm going to shift now to highlight some of the projects and expenditures that you'll find in this capital improvement plan. Starting first with the Elements Burlington School System. Uh, we are recommending a $3.9 million investment in the PAYGO funding. ABSS requested about $4 million, so it's just slightly less than their request. I've talked with them and this will allow them to accomplish all the projects that they have submitted. Some of those projects encompassed in this $3.9 million expenditure uh, focus on safety. We have cameras, door access, fire safety needs, and flooring and asbestos abatement in that category. In your deferred maintenance, we have door and window replacements. We have facility improvements and window blind replacements. You'll see the athletic site improvements th for 325,000 on the screen. That is the Cummings bleachers that we had heard from residents um, that was included in this. And then some vehicle replacements uh, for maintenance and activity buses, some playground and classroom replacements and then an emergency contingency fund that they would like to have as a flat amount year after year so that they're not coming back asking for small amounts of money along the way as emergencies arise. We thought that this would help them accomplish things a little faster by having a pot of money that they could go to for minor needs along the way. Next, I have Alamance Community College. We are recommending 536,000 in pay-as-you-go funding. This would take care of some um, campus renovations and repairs, some safety upgrades, equipment and vehicle replacements, a roof repair, and then some system upgrades. I'll note that this amount is the requested level that ACC submitted for their projects, and it's also flat with the fiscal year 23-24 adopted amount. <coughs> and then last on this slide, I have the county um, capital projects. I have a detention center roof replacement and an HVAC repair. The courthouse repair and upfit for $350,000 is to replace the historic courthouse elevator. I'm sorry, to repair the historic courthouse elevator for $170,000. And then some courtroom upfits to accommodate the new technology system, their Odyssey system. So please note that this is not a courthouse expansion nor a new courthouse project. Then I have an athletic field um, update on here for $1 million. You remember that the board committed to doing $1 million a year for three years. So this would be your second year of investing in athletic field updates. And we are recommending AO Elementary for next year's project. 
There are several other county projects that would be funded with additional funding sources outside of the general fund. We have some installment loans, some state grants, and some solid waste fees that would accomplish the four projects that you see listed there. These are pretty large and too large, in fact, to use general fund for. So the uh, 911 CAD, uh, that's your computer-aided computer, computer -aided dispatch replacement, is a $5.2 million project that we would need to take on next year. We have some mandated uh, radio replacements that are also needed. We have highlighted these at your board retreat and bringing these back um, for recommendation in your CIP. Um, the other ones are, I think you're also aware of, um, the Emergency Services Center, that's your BD building, and then the landfill roof replacement, which would use landfill funds for that. Did I skip one? No. Okay. For future impacts, what we're seeing is that for fiscal year 24, 25, all of those pay-as-you-go projects um, can be supported through your current revenue levels. So there would not be any need for additional revenue to fund the three categories of PAYGO funds. For your uh, fiscal year 25 installment loan projects, which was the ones we saw in the bottom half of the slide, um, those would need uh, future revenue sources to support the debt service beginning in fiscal year 27-28. That's the phase two emergency services center upfit, and that would be the um, implementing the countywide uh, roof and HVAC system replacement needs for future years. So for the capital budget, so that is the upcoming fiscal year 24-25, this is just a summary of what that pay-as-you-go funding stream <laughs> level is representing. So ABSS would be going up from 3.3 in the current year to 3.9 next year. Elements Community College would remain flat as requested. And then the county projects would be going from 1.75 million roughly to 2.8 million in next year's. And just as a reminder, what's coming next related to the CIP, we have a special work session that I mentioned scheduled for April 22nd at 10 a.m. in this room. The budget will be presented. Uh, we'll have a budget public hearing in June. And then this year we are doing the adoption of the budget and the capital improvement plan at the same time. That was some feedback that you all had given me that it was difficult to adopt your CIP. <coughs> without having the operating budget done. <clears throat> so we are gonna ask you to adopt those together this year, although we'll spend some time working through the funding levels in the CIP. That is all that I have um, related to the proposed document. I do have our budget and management services director here, Rebecca Crawford, who can help orient you in with the document and kind of walk you through how that's laid out. Do you have questions for me before she transitions to the document? Ms. Thompson. Yeah, just one. I know mm -hmm. um, ACC got hit with utilities and insurance like everybody else. Yes. And I don't, and that amount was more than the 536,000. So how yes. are you guys, I, you don't have no magic wand, so what's going on with that? So utility increases would be paid out of their operating budget. Right. Those would not be a capital okay. request. I just want to make sure, I need lights. Yeah. <laughs> I expect that we'll see in the operating request increases okay. to accommodate those needs, okay. but not reflected here in your capital budget. Mr. Lashley. I have none. Mr. Carter. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. It was a team effort. We've put a lot of collaboration into this with all of our partner entities and with the staff. Uh, we have really worked, uh, put in a lot of time working together on this to present this this morning. If, if I can ask one more question of... Um, sure. Brian, what's the update on B. Everett Jordan, Saxfile ball field? When do you think that's going to be completed? We have that ball field ready for play next season. Mm -hmm. okay. So we've ordered a lot of the 
I do have a question. Right. So I'd like to then order the concrete building has been ordered, so we're kind of waiting on those things to come in. That's most of the project. Um, so we can just make that over the next several months, but we should be ready for the next phase one. And, and what about um, some kind of event, uh, um, something to really put that in the press as far as for the community and if we thought about anything naming that, something besides Sacks Ball Ball Field, or we're going to name that? Because there was a lot of people that went into the previous community building and all that that really went for that, and our buddy Collins was one of them. And I'm just curious if that's been any kind of conversation about that, because a lot of times we dedicate buildings to people who have been real pioneers that have made things happen, and I was just curious about that. I don't think we've had any discussion about what to call it, uh, if we want to change the name. Um, but I think we should have a ribbon cutting, so we'll, as we get a little closer, we'll definitely have something for everybody to come out and see the name. Okay. Well, just consider the name. That's always really special. It really anchors the community, shows what they put into their community. Well, I have had a conversation with uh, John Jordan, as you may recall. Uh, B. Everett Jordan donated the land for the school, and that's why the facility down there is named for him. Mr. Washington, anything else? I um, just want to make a comment um, that the B. Everett Jordan field was run through the Parks and Recreation Department because the school system couldn't get it done. Let's just say it like that, because that's what happened. A million dollars a year, B. Everett Jordan, next year's AO. I want to thank the uh, Parks and Recreation people for t picking this up and taking care of it for us. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big operation, and it's a million dollars a year, yes. and it was run through the parks because we couldn't depend on the school system to get it done. I'm done. And I also like to say, excellent job, both you guys. Uh, and I would like to acknowledge that ACC is present, and uh, the new chairman is present. President. Uh, President. President, sorry. I'm being corrected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't see anybody from the ABSS, but uh, hopefully they're listening by Zoom. Good job. I don't have any other questions. Excellent. We'll, well get much deeper into this um, April the 27th. That's correct. Uh, well, let's take just a minute to walk through the document that you have in front of you. And I did want to recognize our budget analysts, Jessica Moody and Alex Norwood, who helped pull all this information together along with our departments and our partners. Uh, so you'll see at the very beginning of the document, you have a capital budget executive summary, which is basically the comments that Heidi shared this morning. And then starting on page nine, we have three sections where we've divided it up by Alamance Burlington School System, Alamance Community College on page 15, and then of course Alamance County on page 19. Within each section, you'll see it further divided by the pay-as-you-go funding with a summary, any unfunded projects, and then any projects that are funded by other sources. And then lastly, on page eight, you'll see an overall summary of all of those different projects we talked about with the Alamance Burlington School System, Alamance Community College, Alamance County, and then all of the sources funding that five-year plan. Please let us know if you have any questions, and then we'll see you back on the 22nd for that work session. Board, thank you. any other questions? <coughs> we thank you. <coughs> hey, moving right along, uh, county attorney. I am happy to report that there is nothing to report on. <laughs> <laughs> Other than uh, no public comments, that's by far the best report. <laughs> Again, thank you. Uh, county manager. Yes, good morning. I do have a report, but it's also good news. I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce our new inspections director to the board members. I have Sam Hobgood with us. He is our, our brand new inspections director. He started with us on the 18th of April, comes to us from the city of Raleigh with many years of experience, <coughs> and we are really looking forward to him uh, helping us through inspections and, and really strengthening our customer service with the needs of our residents and home builders. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, aboard. Welcome aboard. 
Are you making it with the big city compared to Raleigh? You doing okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just what, do you live here, there, or? No, sir, I live in uh, Granville County. All right. Yeah. That's not anywhere compared. <laughs> <laughs> you go across the lake every day. Yeah. North of Raleigh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we welcome you. I understand you have all of the top certifications. Yes, sir, I do. And we really look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you. All right. Next to the closest, but county attorneys before it was better. <laughs> no, it it, it was took not. me a long time no to fill that position, so <laughs> happy to have it filled. Okay. Um, before we get into county commissioner's uh, reports, um, I'm going to suggest, and the public may or may not know this, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, uh, each and every commissioner here has been assigned to a number of boards, uh, and each month goes to uh, various meetings, sometimes more than once a month to the various boards, uh, and, but we have not been reporting back um, what happens in those meetings. I am not going to suggest that each commissioner report on every committee they're on because some of us, uh, I think all of us, have numerous committees and so forth. But uh, I am going to ask that uh, in the future with uh, either a separate category or uh, more likely in the county commissioner's comments that we just mention the, the, some of the boards that you're on and what the progress has been during your uh, commissioner's report. Um, and Ms. Thompson, I'm going to call on you for us and, uh, first. And with the book that you introduced two weeks ago at our Ask What Progress, you, and you're the, uh, on the county commissioner on the board for the library committee, what progress has been made on that? I have not heard one thing from the library committee, and I will meet with them when they do. That was um, the main concern of that book was the location of it. There's always going to be things in a public library that on any shelf can tick somebody off based on what you think and how you feel. So um, I, I'm not against the book. I'm just against the fact that it was low on the shelf where little eyes could have gotten hold of it. And, and that's the concern because... Um, you know, freedom of speech is real important to me, but it just needs to be located in a safe place for age appropriate. That's the thing. So. And I appreciate you bringing that up two weeks well, it ago. Was a, it was a mom and her six, either six or seven year old got his hands on it. And, and that's going to happen. Um, that can happen in uh, a bookstore, Barnes and Noble. It can happen anywhere because unfortunately we live in a society that sex sales and violent sales and anything else that we may think is inappropriate where somebody else doesn't, it's on the shelf. So the key is, um, as parents, you just have to really always know where your parents are and your children are at all times and just really look out for them because this world is definitely out to get them. I think that's very... When do you next meet with that more? That uh, I, John, I get the notice. It, they meet every quarter. So right. it's, um, that's a good group. A lot of different people on that group that have a lot of different... Um, perspectives, and that's what you need to kind of come together and make sure you make the right decision. And we appreciate your work in that area. Mr. Lashley. Uh, well, uh, Chairman, I was just going to ask you if you want me to give you an update on the parks, um, on all the uh, boards that I'm on right now. Well, I'm more than happy to do it right now. Not necessarily this all, but some. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'll start with all of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Parks and Recs, just want to let you know that Parks and Recs is once again building the Beaver Jordan Field. They should be finished uh, by this spring. Uh, I, Brian, I got, a, I got a note that that could be done by July 1st, just saying, just saying. Uh, also, Board of Health, with Board of Health, we actually uh, nominated and, and uh, put a new engineer on the board. Uh, he just started his last meeting. We're really happy to have him. Uh, he brings a lot of uh, experience, <coughs> excuse me, to the Board of Health. <clears throat> and um, the other committee I'm on is the Senior Citizens, and we just had all our representatives from the state come in and give a presentation of what the state is doing for our aging population. It was an extremely good meeting, and I would suggest anyone in the community who's interested in this, 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 meet, this uh, Senior Citizens meets this uh, third Tuesday of the uh, month, Ms. Evans is there with us. It's, it's very informative, and all, everyone in this room is going to get older. <laughs> so 
We hope. <laughs> we do hope. And uh, it's, a, it's a really a good, uh, I'm just so happy that uh, the senior citizens have a group that they can express their feelings and concerns and get uh, feedback from state representatives. Uh, the other board I'm on is a voluntary agriculture district. I know I'm sharing this with Craig Turner because uh, I, I had been on it for three years, but I still go and look at the meetings. And uh, this coming year is extremely important because of our budget. Um, not pointing fingers here, but last year's budget, we actually took about $45,000 from the voluntary agriculture district. Uh, it was my understanding that the way we were going to fund the voluntary agriculture district was anybody who pulled out a PUV would 10% of that increase in taxes and stuff that they have to pay for three years would come back to the voluntary agriculture district. Uh, that was my idea to fund this organization outside of having to have the taxpayers fund it. And I do want to sit down with staff and actually look at this again because I do believe this is an extremely important way for Voluntary Agriculture District to get funded and it won't cost taxpayers a dime. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Well, um, so I serve on the park board. That's uh, Piedmont Authority for Regional Transportation and I'm on their finance and their uh, their finance committee there. In a, I'm also on the ACTA board, which is the Alamance County Transportation Authority, and on the Link Transit board, and on the TAC board, which is the Burlington Graham MPO uh, Traffic Advisory, Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, we're in, we're going through a situation right now where we've had a study done to look at overall look at the transportation and trying to make it more efficient. The recommendation for the study has been finished, has been that there be at some point some sort of a consolidation to create more efficiency between ACTA, LINK, and PART. Uh, preliminarily, they're looking at combining, trying to combine ACTA and LINK, and that's going to be a, appears to be a difficult move because there's some issues between LINK being the driver or ACTA being the driver in that relationship. But the recommendation from the research that was done is that, it, that ACTA be the overall lead agency since it covers the county and LINK, while it does provide transportation across the county, doesn't go out into the rural parts of the county. Um, the TAC uh, committee is looking at uh, a couple of different issues. One is the Southern Loop. I brought that up in here once or twice before. And another one, the, one of the, just an example of some of the things they work on, we look at all the different uh, expansions of roads coming in and out of communities across the county. And uh, looking at a, uh, one example, a roundabout for Saxbaha. Um, there's a big tra traffic issue at the two time changes for the schools, people coming in and people leaving for the Hawbridge School at Saxon Hall is a small community and there's one intersection, a T intersection, and it just bogs things down when people are trying to get through that intersection backing up to the stops. And uh, DOT thinks, NCDOT thinks a roundabout, a small roundabout <coughs> might work. And if you, there's an example of the roundabout they're looking at over next to where we've built the Divergence Center, now soon to be called, I think, the Behavioral, uh, Health Behavioral Health Center, Health Center um, at the intersection of uh, Long Pine and Kirkpatrick. And then um, I'm also on the Alamance Community College Board of Trustees. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, Dr. Engel here this morning. There's a wealth of stuff we're looking at. I told him there was no way in the world I could keep all that between my ears in one short meeting. but. I mean, you know, one, one of the things we're looking at is we're, we're building a, a barn for large veterinary animals. We have a, a veterinary uh, assistance training program there, and the barn is, is going to be used to house some large animals so the students can work with those large animals right there on the facilities. Um, uh, barn and stable, uh, we've... Uh, you know, we're in the process, I'm on the uh, Building and Grounds Committee there and on the Finance Committee. We're in the process now of construction, is actually has begun on the Public Safety Training Center. Praise the Lord for that. 
Um, that I think we believe is going to be finished in 2027. Is that right? 25. 25. That's faster than I thought it would be. Okay. Um, and we've gotten the funding squared away from both state and federal sources to make sure we can complete that whole procedure. So um, other facilities, let's see, have I, what have I missed, Dr. Engel? You, you've definitely covered the big ones, uh, certainly looking at uh, improvements to our small business center. Right. And, uh, looking at some opportunities there to improve that space and continuing work on our G, uh, G building and Powell building right uh, and yeah, we just had a meeting on the on, on some opportunities for the small business center uh, last week so um, there's a lot going on at ACC and it's going to continue to be a lot going on out there ACC is an unbelievable asset for the county I mean every dollar invested by the county in ACC has a return on investment of four dollars it's an amazing operation uh, the the Public Safety Training Center, we believe, is going to be a big economic boom to the northern Graham, northeastern Alabama, uh, northeastern Burlington, Green Level, Hall River area up there once they get that up and running. So it's going to bring a lot of people in. And we've had more, we've had other colleges get interested in getting involved in that with us, partnering with us to train, use our new facility. We're going to have a major um, uh, driving pad that's going to be really big. So we're, you can tra you'll train EMTs to drive ambulances, uh, firemen to drive fire trucks, uh, law enforcement to maneuver, uh, um, use the different techniques they use to try and stop vehicles if they're trying to run, those sorts of things. Um, train classroom, fire, uh, fire training center, burn tower, uh, a lot of stuff going on. <coughs> what else did I leave out? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And it's an, an indoor shooting range, by That's the way, right. which will not only be good for officers, we can do it daytime, nighttime, driving uh, with lights on or off. Uh, the reason I know a lot of this in our oversight committee meeting, which was last Thursday, uh, they had a wonderful presentation um, and the track being able to um, cut on or off lights at, uh, for night driving, things of that sort, yeah, I think is major. The um, fact that the community is much happier with an indoor shooting range. Uh, and I know that comes, uh, I, I might have shot a firearm or two in my lifetime, so <laughs> I know that uh, shooting ranges, particularly indoor, are expensive. And you have all kinds of filtering issues and uh, things of that sort, so that is major for this county. Um, my committees, were you through? I would just add there that our, we made a major commitment at the college level and at the county level when we started this project to make sure that the citizens of Green Level weren't going to be impacted by 24-hour-a-day gunfire um, by, by building that indoor firing range. That, that's been one of the issues that slowed the project down was trying to make sure it was, the, the cost of that facility just escalated unbelievably. The whole project did. Mr. Turner, I know you're on Zoom. Would you like to comment? I have nothing to add at this time, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thanks, sir. Um, I'm on the um, oversight and chair of the oversight committee. Mr. Carter's on that same uh, committee with me. Uh, and we had our last meeting this past Thursday. Um, the school board uh, presented a number of projects which are ongoing uh, and which are finally really in progress and moving much, much quicker than they ever have in the past. Um, the roofs that were shown that have been funded uh, since 2022 are now contracts are being let and they're actually starting to do work on those roofs. Um, with the um, VIA board, and I'm on the both state and regional board. Uh, Mr. Lashley's on the regional board, and I think we have a meeting, see the Wednesday or Thursday Wednesday. of this week, um, uh, with that board. Um, they're doing wonderful things. What we work on the calling the diversion center, 
has now been named as Mr. Carter stole my thunder, the <laughs> Alabama beha behavior. I got a chance to do that every once in a while. John. <laughs> uh, center. Uh, so it now has an official name and should open uh, relatively soon and have a ribbon cutting. Uh, that will enable folks in crisis uh, for all kinds of things to be able to go first to the diversion center either, either voluntarily themselves or with a family member or with law enforcement or um, with other agencies that are now servicing the citizens of Alamance County. They can be assessed at that point. Um, if it's an issue with uh, su substance abuse, for example, alcohol or drugs and so forth, uh, they can be housed with up to 16 beds. We cannot go over 16. If you go to 17, the state re and feds require us to then qualify as a hospital, and that's even more expense. So we do not uh, desire to do that, but we will have up to 16 beds, uh, and that is moving very, very rapidly. I drove by there uh, this past week. Uh, I did not go in it. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Ms. Thompson, I think, did you go in the center or just no, drive through? No, I was just trespassing. <laughs> so, so she did the same around the building. No, she did the same, same thing that I did, apparently. Uh, but we should have a ribbon cutting in the near future uh, with that facility. Uh, they hope to move furniture and things of that sort in in the uh, in the pretty near future. June, wasn't it? I was looking at June. I was, Mr. Carter saying June or July, and I was not going to mention a date, but <laughs> but since it's leaked out, uh, we're hoping for that to be the ribbon cutting. Um, I'm also on the planning board. Uh, oddly enough, on the planning board, it's the only board that I'm on that I do not get to vote uh, while, as a member of the planning board. The reason is their procedural manual says uh, that since I'm a commissioner and get a final vote, that I don't get a preliminary vote on suggesting what goes to the county commissioners. But I attend those meetings. They're primarily right now looking at uh, minimum lot sizes of up to two acres. Um, I've had a lot of input from uh, contractors, from citizens, from uh, farmers that may or may not decide to uh, sell off some lots and so forth, and it's been pretty split at this point. Many, many do not want two-acre minimum lot sizes, um, particularly the contractors and so forth. Uh, but some of the others do want that. So it's, uh, it has not been suggested yet by the planning board to the county commissioners that we increase those lot sizes. Currently, it's 30, uh, 33,000 square feet. Does that sound right? Uh, I think so. Is it 30,000? 30, 30,000. Uh, 30, yeah. Uh, yeah, square feet, uh, which is about a third of an acre. Um, and some on the planning board, uh, that board itself is, uh, from what I've seen, relatively split. About half want to increase the size and about half do not. Uh, so that'll have an impact on you, sir, uh, if they do that. So you may want to throw your two cents worth in uh, and make suggestions to that planning board. So um, that's not all the boards I'm on, but uh, those are the ones that are moving right now the quickest. County commissioners, any other comments? Um, just one. Um Last the 28th of last week, um, I was invited, and I understand two other commissioners had gone before me to uh, do a tour of the ER. When I used to work for Crossroads, um, I would be in the back of the ER where you get a rape kit done, and probably nobody knows that's in there unless you are that victim. Um, our hospital does a whole lot of things that the public is not aware of with circumstances like that, but um, I toured the emergency room, and I went into the uh, mental health room where um, I saw several people that are being held, and that's probably not the right word, due to what they're going through in their situation. 
And I had a long talk with um, Ryan and some of the other real pros in the system about um, what we do with folks that come in, involuntary commitment or whatever it looks like, because um, IVCs are very popular nowadays coming out of the jail with just people that are just breaking, whether they've got addiction problems or long-term mental health problems, they've gone off their meds, they're self-medicating. It's just a mess. Um, and uh, and I, I saw some folks that have been there for quite a while, and the consensus was is ARMC is not a psychiatric hospital. Um, and we've got the Diversion Center, which is also not a psychiatric hospital. It's a very temporary, quick fix trauma kind of thing to divert that patient to where they need to go. And I've, I've stressed on this since I've been on this commission board, diverting them is going to be the issue because where are you going to divert them to? Locally, we're kind of shortchanged in that. Living Free is an excellent addiction program. Christ-centered, I'll put them against anybody around, but they are not in mental health situation. They go together sometimes, but that's not what they do. And uh, we got about 140 group homes in this county, 19 which are youth, and a lot of times youth will run away from a place like that. I got on this box last time about um, these kids have been really traumatized. They've gotten in trouble with the juvenile court system, and they're there. And, um, some t and training for people that work, and I'm on that group home task force, sometimes isn't, you know, they don't, we're, we're quick to do this. It's just a lot of things that just kind of get dropped. But the one thing I noticed about our hospital is uh, they've, they're, we got a great hospital, but that's not what they do, and they have concerns about that. Um, I'd always hope that seeing a psychiatric hospital be built because Butner is it. Um, we had a gentleman accused of first-degree murder that I had to go down there and interview because it was just a long-term situation with this gentleman. He's in prison now, but um, alleged whatever. And... Um, you have to have long-term things for some folks because they just can't turn their life around in four to seven days. It's just it's just not going to work. And uh, as much as I support, support the Diversion Center, there have got to be other avenues too, and our county has to realize that. Um, everybody is always in a state of recovery if you're an addiction victim of that because that's always there chasing you. And it's the same thing with mental health medications work and then the body starts changing and you have to tweak those medications. It's a constant battle all the time. And uh, as leaders, we have to be willing to look at the real ugly part of society one time and, and just especially with children. You've got some kids that have been through some stuff that have violence like you can't imagine how they can be. And that's all been laid on them and that's how they survive it is they react to it. So. Um, what I saw, I saw a gentleman leaning up against the glass, and he leans up against the glass all day long because the nights never go off. The lights never go off. And, um, and it's, I need to make my phone call. I need to make my phone call. That's all he said all day long. And I also saw two seniors out in the hallway with a slight partition on wheels because they both have um, dementia, and they have no one. And they've been in that hospital ER sitting there in that bed for a while, and that's not where they belong. There are good things in the system and there are failures in the system because they're all run by humans and that's just what we do. We win and lose. And um, I, I don't want ARMC, an emergency room, you go there if you've got a broke leg, you go there if you have a heart attack, go there for triage. That's what you go there for is the emergency room. It is not a treatment center for mental health or any of these other situations. So um, we cannot be afraid to look at this. I'm a big advocate of that hospital. They've had my father there for several several heart attacks. I've never had a bad experience at ARMC. I've been lucky. And um, I just want us to also have empathy for them and what they do and not put them in a situation to do what they're not supposed to be doing. And we may have to really reach out. Diversion Center is going to be wonderful, but understand it's a diversion center. It diverts people. They don't stay there. And um, it, it's just, it's just, really a very situation and I want to say something about 911 um, the folks that work in 911 never get to put their hands on people they hear their crisis which means that crisis comes through the phone to you uh, EMS law enforcement fire go out and put their hands on people and um, but the stress is no different and I just want to thank 911 because when I did the sheriff's citizen academy and we went to the down wherever it is 911 uh, we heard a suicide on the phone and it was like no noise whatsoever. And we knew what all had happened. And I saw the faces of everybody in that room, not just the one on the phone, but everybody in that room, because they're quite a team. 
And uh, I, we always call 911, and we just expect them just to direct everything. But just know they never get to put their hands on that person, but they're no less important. So I just want to thank you guys for always answering. Well, the follow-up to what Ms. Thompson just indicated, she's right. The uh, What used to be called the diversion, now the Alamance Behavioral Center, uh, their purpose is not long-term stay. It never has been. Uh, but it's to allow them to assess individuals and get them into uh, Butner, for example, or private uh, hospitals or all kinds of uh, centers that do specialize in those areas. Uh, and I uh, am joining Ms. Thompson because having a psychiatric hospital locally uh, we can't do it simply because it's massive hospital and expense. But we, Ms. Thompson and I both and this board, can <coughs> encourage our state senator and two house reps and just the North Carolina legislature in general to do that. We need more than Butner, but that's a state project um, and cannot. We Alamance County folks could never fund a massive hospital like that. So we've got to join together and support a statewide effort uh, to accomplish that. Any other board member? Mr. Chairman, um, in support of what Ms. Ms. Thompson just said to the, the facilities, 20% of the beds in the cone facility, right, co co various cone facilities, 20% of the um, beds in the ER facilities in Cone are currently tied up with what they call borders. They can't get these people out. That's what Ms. Thompson was referring to. We can't evict them. There's no place for them to go. And there, there are situations there where there is, uh, they were telling us that uh, Mr. Mr. Lashley and I visited over there a couple of weeks ago. They were telling us that there was this one patient who would assault a nurse or a staff member, get Law enforcement would come in, have to arrest them, take them and book them. Then they'd be released, and immediately an order was sent out to have them sent back to the hospital because there wasn't any place else for them to go, and they couldn't be released out in the public. But it's a loop. They get back in the hospital, they assault somebody. That's just one of the issues. And then I think the young people that Ms. Thompson was referring to, I think the day we were there, we saw four youth just sitting on the floor in a, in a closed facility, tying up about a half dozen um, hospital workers. Um, there, there's definitely an issue there that the state needs to try and take a look at and find a create some opportunity for us to have a place to put people that have these sorts of needs that's not, that, that gives them some sort of a life rather than just being observed and, and held and tying up space. If we had a critical issue in Alamance County where we needed that bed space, people would be stacked up in the ER or going to other hospitals because there wouldn't be enough capacity in the ER because of the existing use for other people to get in. That's why you have, it, that's not the only reason, but some uh, back in COVID, I know we had situations where people were out in the parking lot waiting uh, on family members, 15, 20 hours for them to get into a bed in ER, so. So you people in Zoom land and or here in the audience, contact your state individuals, your uh, House members, your senators, and so forth, and let it be known that that's not just an Alamance County need, it's a statewide need, it's really a national need. Right. Uh, but you know we really don't have the money locally to do that but anyway law enforcement just entered the room again this is uh, we just recognized public safety week coming up in april so we welcome you and say thanks for everything you do thank you for all you do too we appreciate it thanks sir one other item too with with this uh the the uh opioid funding we are looking at part of that funding will be used for a drug court was well, one of the things Ms. thompson and i've 
she's been driving it really hard. But back in, well, golly, was it about three years ago now mm -hmm. that we went up and looked at a situation up in Stokes County? I Surrey. Think? Surrey County. Uh, they came they here, too. Beg your pardon? They came here to speak. That's right. Us. They came here and made a presentation to us. So we're now finally getting to a point where we got the funding for a drug court. So. And additionally, the VIA Behavior Center will have a drug center in that facility. Right. So that's, we're making a lot of progress, but we still need much, much more on a statewide level. And that, and Mr. Fortner reminded me, I don't ask you nothing, reminded me of shortages. Nothing personal. The detention I center. Sure. I know. Not, <laughs> I sure. I'll go there in a minute. But um, the detention center has shortages. EMS has shortages. DSS has shortages. And the ER has shortages. Um, Ryan told me that the shortages in nursing, they have 30 traveling nurses. And if they didn't have them, they would be in a real fix. So see, everybody that comes to you in the worst time of your life, there's shortages. But the worst time in your life doesn't stop. So it's something to think about. Um, first responders and anybody like that that really cares for us need to always be honored and respected and paid a wage that's worthy of them, if there is such a wage. So uh, we need to think about that because we always call and we just expect people to be there. And uh, you just better pray that one day somebody doesn't not show up. So we need to appreciate these folks. Let me mention one last thing, and I'll promise to shut up. <laughs> uh, with our new inspections director, and we're so pleased that you're here, uh, and we'll start your job day after tomorrow? Not quite. <laughs> soon, very soon. Uh, the planning board and the inspection board, uh, until just a couple of meetings ago, were one board. Um, and we had one director to service both boards. Uh, that has now changed. So inspections, totally separate board from the planning board. Uh, and consequently, this will really expedite the issuing of petitions and all <coughs> kinds of things that have been slow, much slower than we wanted in the past. So we again, thank you. Board, anything else? That's Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. A motion to adjourn a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs>Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.